Hello guys, my name is Emmanuel from the technical department here at FAC. Um, today I'll be bringing to you sibling collect modules. And today we'll be taking a look at the XMB module. This is effectively the GSM. We're going to connect our antenna onto the XMB. And once that's done, we're actually going to plug it in. The way I plug it in is to uh, make a count of the antenna side facing down. And I'm just going to put the end of the antenna just on top here. It's got a magnetic bit to the side as well. Once that's done, you power on your control board. And once your control board is powered on, the first thing we're going to do is to actually change the channels. So we're looking for the forward C and the backward C. And we're going to change that to channel 1. Once that is done, I'm going to use the F button to tap out the menu till I see ST. And F to save as well. And that goes back into 50, which means unconfigured. So I've gone to I've gone into the Play Store and I've downloaded a Simply Connect. And the one that I need as an installer is the Pro version. That is the dark colored one with the chain link. And I've opened up the application on my tablet. Now the application is open. One of the first things that I'll need is the actual QR code when doing a new configuration. So I go to the bottom of the app, you see a plus sign. Tap on the plus sign, you get a few options, add event or add automation system. Because we're adding the new system, we're gonna choose the second one, add automation system. And we're gonna go for the smart option. To verify the one that we're actually working with is actually the one that we see. I'm gonna look at my serial number, it ends in 10004, and that matches up with one of the options. So I'm just gonna tap on that and it's gonna ask me to scan the QR code to authenticate it. So I'm just gonna give it permission and scan that in the back. Once it's authenticated, you're going to get device information such as your serial number, the firmware and hardware type, which might be important for later on. And you're gonna see the status on the right hand side as well. Now we're going to proceed. Let's work set up. And for the XMB module, it that is going to be GSM. Once that option has been selected, you can proceed on the right hand side at the top. We're going to continue and because this is a new site, we're going to begin configuring it. So tap on not started. So the next part of it is to actually set up the site. And for my site, I'm going to call it the location where I am. it done and the next field will be the client field if you don't have a client that is already registered in the system what you could add the button is to populate it so you could go in new and that comes up with the option to you know put down the contact name the surname and the type of sites that you have so just a second I'm just gonna put the name in And the type is effectively which um, person you'll be speaking to on site. Would that be the end user, the company, the facility manager? For me, do, this will be the manager on site. And that's the only required information. Next will be the automation type. And for this, I'm gonna call it a demo. You have the option to actually select the address for where the system is. Um, I'm just gonna turn mine off because I want to be precise about where it is. This is very good if you have multiple systems on a campus or a hospital. I'm just gonna give you the address and um, allow it to find the location. Once you've popped in your location, the next will be the components. I'm going to select yes, and I'll pop in the product code. And for me, that would be and I could hit the search button. 
that should help propagate the model type and that will be a 413 operator on 24, volt, on 24 volts and I'm going to add that Once that is done, the system is going to actually ask me to take a picture of the operator. That's very good just for you know admin and management reasons, so I know which I know which one on site it is. Lovely, the picture has been captured. Now I'm going to go into the next is to add in another mandatory component. That will be my second motor or your control board, depending on which system configuration you have. The next mandatory step is to actually add your next equipment. So I'm going to tap on it. And for me, that will be to add the electronic control board. Because I'm fortunate enough that I have the control board in front of me, the barcode is down here. So I'm just going to use my camera on the tablet give that a scan and once it's scanned you're going to get the information about which control board you're using and the brand as well so for the purpose of this demonstration i'm just going to skip adding any accessories on site and once that's done i'm going to click on confirm and it's going to give you a warning if you're sure about the information that you put in is that satisfactory because i'm happy and i've checked everything matches up i'm going to click on yes to move forward right and you can see it and the status is already installed and you get a green tick as well and i'm going to confirm And the next page is going to verify your network connection. The next step is to go through the guided programming option. The first option is to choose the motor that you're using on site. And to choose the number of leaves, I have a one leaf system, so I'm going to select that. Um, I'm going to leave the default parameters for the motor force, respectively, for opening and closing. The next one is um, asking if you have an encoder in your system. For me, I do. I'm just going to click yes. Uh, it's going to ask if you have limit switches as well. Um, my current configuration I've done, so I'm just going to leave that. It's no. And after that, you'll be prompted if you want to um, memorize the first radio control, something I want to do later on. And um, you get asked if you want the, um, the user to have control of the actual logic. Um, for me, I can say yes, you know, if I want to change it from a callback setting to an automatic setting, so to say. And after that, you have a choice of default of, um, operation logic. For me, I'm going to choose A, which is automatic, which takes account of pause time. I could adjust the pause time up and down as I need it to be. But well, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to keep it at approximately 10, 8 seconds, 10, 8 seconds, that is fine. And I'll do the same thing as well for the second. The difference between the first and the second is the, uh, the type of command you give it, whether it's an open A or open B. Now I'm stood by the gate and my entranceway is clear, there's no obstructions of vehicles in the way. I'm going to use the deadline control to operate my gate and see if I'm satisfied with this operation. To do that, I'm going to hold on the motor opening. With the operation of the gate, I'm going to move forward into a setup. Effectively, during the setup, the control board is trying to learn the time taken to fully open the gate and also use the information from the encoder or, and or the limit switches to learn about its position as well.
Now the setup is complete, I'm going to proceed by giving the gate an open A command, which is a full command. So I'm just going to go to the tablet and tap open A. Now, as you can see, the gate is opening. And once it reaches the full end position, it's going to count the pause time that I've configured. And once that time has elapsed, it's going to begin closing. There are plenty of more features on the Simply Connect Pro app, which will be coming out later on in the future videos. Thank you. Mm -hmm.